Fakakta Comedy Funhouse Network. <laughs> It's Couch Pilots. It's the show that dares to fly into the unknown territory of awful television pilots of the past. My name is Jason, a.k.a. The Back Biopsy. And across from me is the one and only Blake Clayton. But goddammit, if you're not going to call him Captain Philip Russisher. Good evening, Captain. Welcome, my friend. How are you doing? Great. I'm doing, I feel great. I look great. You, f- you look great. I can only assume you feel great. I feel awesome. It's a Monday night. Yeah. We take flight. You know, most people say, everybody's working for the weekend. Fuck that. I'm working for Monday night. Seriously, Mondays are the toughest days for me to get through at work. <clears throat> Recently, I drove 15 hours in one weekend. Insanity. And, and and I got through the day only knowing that I was going to be able to go take a shower at the player uh, at the pilot's lounge. I keep calling it the Players' Lounge. May as I, well. Because I go. You may as well call it the Players' Lounge. Because I go. Because yeah, we play on, play yeah. And uh, I took a shower. You know, I got in the hot tub for a little bit. Relaxed myself. And was like, looked at my watch. And I'm like, Jason's going to be here. Countdown's on. We get our suits Four, on. Four, three, two, one. We get our uniforms on. We check with DSJ, make sure everything's kosher. Yep. Because he's Jewish. Take to the skies, Jewish Down syndrome. <laughs> well, hey. I don't know what that means, but um, yeah, you know Mondays. People always say I got the case of the Mondays. You know, my name is Garfield. I eat lasagna. I hate Mondays. People always say that to me. And uh, but the truth of the matter is, I love Mondays. Do you think Odie? I think Odie really held that strip up, don't you? Odie really is. The, Odie was adorable. Yeah, he's the unsung hero. Mm-hmm. I would say the black horse, the dark horse. I love the word black. You do. Um, you know, I like, like, like too. I like the the black arts, the dark arts. You ever get into that? Um, I used to listen to Metallica. Mm-hmm. That, that's pretty much the same. Black Sabbath. I, ooh, there you go. Black Sabbath. I've been uh, I, I've been dabbling in Scientology recently. Yeah, I remember I, you talking about that. Is that going well? It's going real well. I've been audited, and I got my thetan levels down. Um, you ever get your thetan levels checked? I've had a lot of pain in them. I think it's poor circulation. Yeah, it probably is. Uh, I'm, I'm noticing as my age is getting older, mm-hmm. uh, I'm getting starting to get like crow's feet. Yeah. You know, the little the veins and stuff on my feet? <laughs> crow's feet, yeah. Is That's, that what that is? It's common. Varicose? It, varic- yeah, oh, no, it's terrifying. Um you know, I, I don't want to tell. Tell me that it does not look dangerous. It that, does look. Your know, your feet look dangerous to me. You know what it looks like? Crow's feet. It looks like you've got poor circulation. Diabetes. And, you know, I want to say that Scientology can cure you of almost anything, and I don't want to. But I don't. I don't. I don't feel like I make enough money to be in Scientology. I think you have to be really rich, don't you? No, you don't have to be rich. That's ah. a that's a misnomer. You just come down to this the uh, the Hollywood Center where I work. Sure, you know, and when I say work, usually work, work says work. Angelica, work, work. The Skyler Sisters. You just say you just say the Skyler Sisters work, but the truth is, work is like I get paid for it. I don't get paid for it. I go down there and I donate my you time. You volunteer at the sure Scientology. I do. Absolutely, I, I do a, a variety of different jobs to help out that center, and ultimately, you can do the same and be audited, and it will cost you virtually nothing. Now, when you see Tom Cruise there, can you ask him for his autograph, or are you not allowed to do that? I'm not allowed to do that. I'm fairly new in the Scientology game. He is on a level where he is um, he he can he's had cancer to the point where it's fatal, but he's cured it because of Scientology. Oh. He is working on a level where he does not get ill. He does not get sick. Does he have a license? He has a license to become ill, but he chooses to ignore that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my, I'm extending an invitation to you, to Scientology, so I can I can check your thetan levels and, and audit you correctly so that you can be as pure as I and eventually get to the point where you'll no longer get sick and you'll live in an eternity. I don't th- want to live forever. I want to die as soon as possible. Well, then don't join Scientology. I'll tell you what. At crow's feet. Let me let me Wikipedia Scientology. Sure. After this flight, and then I will get back to you next week. I would say do not do not Google Leah Remini. 
What is what's your liminarity to me? <laughs> don't don't Google it. Okay. Uh, but people also But uh, do uh, but do Google blue waffle image. <laughs> I don't I feel like that's I've a, come up before and that's a I'm very, still uninterested in that's it. That's a very old IBWIP reference. It is. Ugh, God. I'm so happy that I live in a time where I can be included in what is considered an old IBWIP reference. Mm. I'll also say that I, um, I'm i glad to live in a time where the dark arts are associated with Scientology and as such ties in directly to what we're doing today. Exactly. A few weeks ago. A few weeks ago. A few weeks ago. Perfect. We got a voicemail, which is not uncommon. We get a lot of voicemails here. It's 910 Pilots 1. I didn't even look at that. It's fucking seared into my memory. You, anyone can call that number. Anyone can call 910 Pilots 1 or a 910-745-6871. Call directly into the show and you can leave us a voicemail. And we're going to re- we're going to play it right here on the show. You can hear your stupid voice right here on Couch Pilots. And you'll be able to uh You'll be able to talk directly to us, and damn it, we're going to talk right back to you. And someone who talked to us from beyond the crypt, just like uh, Vincent Price once did, mm. and I don't know. Is uh, If you could talk to anybody from beyond the grave, who would you talk to? Oh, geez. Um, is Bill Nye the science guy dead? Not yet. Uh, my grandpa then? Uh, my great-grandma Opal is who I would. Her name was Opal? Mm-hmm. That's how you know she was your grandma, because that's fucking old as shit. That's an old name. That's an old name. Opal. Old name. How's Virginia doing? Um, pretty good. Pretty uh, good. I went over nice. there I went over there uh, a couple weeks ago. You still go to Walgreens in Washington? Yep. I don't go inside, though. Good. I quit going inside. Why is that? Well, because I can get all her medicine, except when I have to go in and get her knee patches. Then I have to go inside. Yeah. Well, um, dark arts. Let's do it. Yeah, the dark arts. Thank you. Uh, so I'm in silent, Scientology, and people say, "Why are you involved with that? It's a cult." I say, "It's not a cult. It's a, it's I, a cult of personality, right? It's, it's it's not a cult at all. It's living color." And they say, uh, "Well, dig into the dark arts if you want to summon the dead." And you know what? That's not what Scientology is about. But today, that's what I'm about. Let's do it. Because a few weeks ago, like I mentioned, people, someone called nine ten pilots one, <laughs> and oddly enough. It was deceased WWF or WWE as it's now called. But it was professional he, did wrestler. Did he die when it was WWF? I think he did. When it was so du- no, have- no. It was when it was WWE. He okay, died. Okay. Yeah. He and gone. It, he <laughs> he gone. It's Dusty Rose. You remember that guy? Bah, the American Dream. He had a lisp. He, yeah. He had a speech impediment. He was an old man that couldn't correct his speech. Well, because he was he was from the. He was an old dog. Yeah, he was an old dog. You can't teach him new tricks. He always, he always uh, wore like a black onesie with, with uh, polka dots, and he was hanging out with a black lady all but, the time. But see, I remember him from way back during the old school uh, NWA days, and so he didn't have such a get-up. Brothers with attitudes? That's what NWA stands for, mm-hmm. right? Brothers yeah. with attitudes. And he was a brother, and he had an attitude. And so I, rem- I don't remember him as the showman, more so just the hardcore wrestler. Now, okay, anytime I've seen professional wrestling on TV for the most part, the time. he's an ugly man, uh, is uh, WWF. Yeah. So you used to watch NWA on TV? Oh, all the time. Where, where did you see that? It was on It was on TBS. Was it really? Oh, way, yeah. Way back in the day. Yeah. It, I mean, there was competition between NWA and Saturday morning WWF. Wow. And has, has that since been absorbed into the WWE as like a like a uh, yeah because it got absorbed into the WCW okay which then got absorbed into WWE when, See, when I think about we don't need wrestling, fucking we don't need fucking Dustin here to talk shit I about hate wrestling Dustin. I hope he never no, comes on this podcast not, no, again I don't hate him but I I I know my fair share of stuff <laughs> which is obvious because when I think about professional wrestling I think about drunken lullabies I think about sure. the let's try this podcast both. On the FCF network, yes. I don't think about couch bots, but here you are, delving in to to hey when, deep not yeah when there's a popularity train going by, you got to jump on that shit. I mean, I didn't come up with the craft beer thing soon enough. I'd be rich by now. I, yeah, the you fucking should, you surely would. TV shows that never made it with half the people are dead that we talk about. <laughs> no one gives a shit about our show. Um, I give a shit. I give a shit as well. Uh, but people also give a shit about when they call into the show and they say, hey. Here's a pilot you may have never seen. And that person instantly has a, a ticket to ride, right? He don't care. Such is the case for Dusty Rhodes. But the problem is, he's a dead guy, right? 
He's a rotting corpse. He's a skeleton <clears throat> in the ground. Right. I've turned the lights off in the cabin. Turn off the lights. Don't know that song. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh. I've turned the lights off mm-hmm. in the cabin. We just have the one safety light going right now. We're going to perform dark arts right yeah, now. Yeah, we're, we're going to listen to some Black Sabbath earlier today. I'm ready to go. If Dusty Rhodes can resurrect himself from the dead to, to make a telephone us. call. Just to make a simple telephone call. Right. Why can't he be free, on our a free show? Call, a free call. It's a, one, it's a 1-800 number, right? No, one one nine ten pilots one. It's, it's, it's free. It's all free in this day and age. Uh, yeah, at this time, like with cell phones and data plans and everything, everything's free. So what I'm saying is, the dead dusty roads probably has got a good data plan. Sure. Let's you and I participate in the dark arts. Okay. By summoning the living corpse of Dusty Roads. All right. Um, you want? You want? I'm going to say the seance. You want to hold hands? I do want to hold hands with you. Okay. Fake. The, this, All right. This <laughs> this show is built on the back of your hands. No, this this is a lot bigger plane than it used to be before we. Well, went DSJ up. redid the whole thing. They yeah. put in a new motherboard. When we were we were in the boat, it was we could just there we go. Ah, very nice. I need you to repeat after me. Okay? I'll repeat after you. Mecca leka high, mecca hiney ho. Mecca leka high, mecca hiney ho. Mecca leka high, mecca johnny ho. Mecca leka high, mecca johnny ho. But mecca leka high, mecca hiney ho. Mecca leka high, mecca hiney ho. Mecca leka high, mecca johnny ho. Mecca leka high, mecca johnny ho. Oh spirits, we summon the corpse of Dusty Roads. Spirits, do you hear us? Who daddy? What's that? Was that you? Du- was that you, Blake? No, it wasn't me. I, I, it, it, that sounds like. It, Baby, it, I see a light. I'm gonna go to it. Oh, spirits, do not do not play with us. Come to the light, Dusty. Come to the light. Who? The man of the hour. The man with the power. I'm the hit maker, the record breaker. I got the style and grace, a pretty face. I'll make your back crack and your liver quiver. I've traveled the world and wrestled giants. And now the dream is here for Kalth Pilot. Nice. Oh, spirits, do not fool us. Is this the one and only Dusty Rhodes? Daddy, you know it is. Oh, it my God. It is the dream. He is here. Have a seat. Oh, thank God. I'm just going to hover. <laughs> Excuse you. Audible Did you just break wind in front of the could, dream? Could you hover in between us instead of in front of the, the windshield? <laughs> it's going to come in handy later. The Dusty Rhodes, what an honor to be in your presence. You had called 910 Pilots 1 and left a message concerning a, a I failed did. pilot. I did indeed. It, your show is one of my favorite, oh, thank you. favorite podcasts listened to up in heaven. You know, I got a lot of time on my hands. We don't, the dead don't sleep. We got to listen to podcasts. Isn't that, isn't that what Neil Young once said? The yeah. dead don't sleep? Something like or that. Something, now, or something, maybe Rust. Do you know what um, like the Couch Pilots, like their download numbers up in heaven are? I'm just curious. I mean, it's not like I... I don't have that on, kind of data, if you will. You have a data plan? We have Wi-Fi. The password is Holy Ghost. Ah, nice. Holy Ghost and talk show host. Uh, Dusty Rhodes, what an honor to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us from the afterlife and and recommending Fluffy Dogs, which we are going to be talking about shortly. Who, baby? I love me some Fluffy Dogs. They're my second favorite kind of dog. What's your first favorite kind of dog? A Basset Hound. (laughs) (laughs) There's a dragon. A <laughs> uh, hill dragon. I thought fucking Ricky Steamboat was here next to me. Ricky and the I Steamboat look, dragon? He's still alive, Ricky. He's the good guy. I, I have to ask, Dusty, um, how did you find out about about Fluffy Dogs? Because you seem to be a man. If, if you're still alive today, it would be in his 70s. How did you find out about this Disney cartoon? Well, here's the thing. I, I was on the road a lot. Doing my thing and sure, being yeah. the American dream and wrestling from city to city. 
and making boots shake and booty shake. All right. Well, when I got off the road and I stopped doing my runs from city to city, my son, Cody, you may know him. He He's a wrestler, too. He's not gold dust. No, he he's was, the younger one. He was Stardust. Stalker, okay, Stardust. And now he's the American Nightmare. Oh, geez. I'm the American Dream. He's the American the Nightmare. Antithesis. It's all good, baby. We all, <laughs> we're all American. We are all, it, it, we put you through sleep. You guys are making a living, right? He, he's the, the apple of my eye. Cody's doing his thing. And he was a huge fan of Disney Sunday Night. And he would tape them. And when I would come home, he'd be like, Daddy, I got a new show for us to watch. And I'd be like, okay, let's get some popcorn and some sodas. (laughs) (laughs) I think he's asleep. You look like a man who enjoys a lot of popcorn and soda. <laughs> have you seen my physique? I surely have. I'm the son of a plumber, that. baby. <laughs> I'm an American dream. I'm a. I ain't got no six pack. I've been drinking six pack. <laughs> but Cody, he would come up and he would that like, "Daddy, we got. I got a new show. It's called Flippy Dog, and I love this show. And I want you to watch it. And damned if I didn't sit down and watch that Flippy Dog show." Mm-hmm. Hold Maybe on, that hold, was a good show. Hold on, okay. As I was gonna say, he says it's a good show. I don't want to get your rating yet. You said you're you're a fan of the show, which we appreciate. Uh, I'd love it if we could have the dead factor into the numbers of Couch Pod. Well, I, I don't think definitely. that's the case necessarily. But um, we're gonna do some ratings at the end. I was just curious about how you found out about this. Is your the apple of your eye, Cody Rhodes, known as Stardust, the American Nightmare? Yes, Cody, if you will, Stardust, the American Nightmare. He's the one. Who brought it to my attention? We watched it many times over the years. Well, Dusty Rhodes, uh, that's incredible. I am I'm so happy that you're with us. We are gonna we're gonna it's such an honor. Absolutely. We never we've never had a living the, corpse on this you're show. You're the before. most famous person that we've ever actually had on the plane. Bar we're, none. We've talked to some people that are more famous than you. Yeah. I will have you know I'm the second most famous athlete in the world aside from Muhammad Ali. Is that right? You're right behind Muhammad Ali. Right? I'm the self-proclaimed second okay. most recognizable athlete. Is that all you have to do is proclaim it, and then you are that? Trademark. Trademark. <laughs> Confirm. <laughs> all right. Well, Dusty, please hold tight. We're going to banter a little bit more, which which includes... Uh, I love good bantering. Fan feedback. Fan feedback. People people reach out to this show. Other than, other than famous folks like you, Dusty, people reach out to this show, and they have something to say, and I'll be damned if we're not going to talk about it right now. Definitely. Uh, we don't have any voicemails, but, uh, we do have (laughs) a sniff and a burp, a sniff and a burp. (laughs) Uh, Lori Garcia commented on Uh, the first lady of couch pilots. Yes. The most beautiful woman ever to grace. You had said something earlier tonight and forgive me if I'm speaking out of turn, but how she's kind of like a nerdy hot. I completely agree with that. I don't see a lot of pictures of her. She's a beautiful lady. And she made a, uh, a, an Instagram Comment on our show art for Super Nerds. Okay. It says, Big Dick T and I were listening to this episode last night, and Big Dick T said, you must be in love with me because all the reasons you listed, her nose, glasses, nerdy, cute, etc., were the same reasons that uh, as Richard's. I think it's great that the boys get together by getting trashed, flying Air Force One, hooking up with trannies and making <laughs> fake bomb threats on to CNN. It gives me the privilege of handling first lady duties like how Mo- Melania Trump does it. If Melania, baby. Melania doing jack shit because fuck people. Hashtag first lady. Hashtag I just want <laughs> us. I just want a sugar daddy. Hashtag I just want a sugar yeah, a lot, lot the of drink could be stuff. your sugar daddy. Oh hell yeah! Oh shit! Um, <clears throat> awesome sauce. Last one. Now this was this one caught me off guard, and the ones that catch me off guard sometimes are probably the most meaningful to me. Okay, yeah. Um, 
<clears throat> on a podcast Facebook group. Just a, just just a a group of just random people. I have no idea what that means. A podcast group. It says, "What are your favorite podcasts?" Question mark. And then we had a gentleman say, uh, say uh, "Grim Grim Noir." N O that is N O R N O I R. Noir. Grim baby. Noir. Grim Noir right. says, "Right now, I'm binging on Couch Pilots." So and some guy t- we don't know is down yeah. with the program. Yeah, and uh, God he's, bless him. he's from. Uh, I did some research. He's married. I'm sorry. R.I.P. Um, <laughs> and he's from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So he's he studied liberal arts at the School of Hard Knocks University. <laughs> I studied at that school. Yeah, and so he, he does. He know Dusty Rhodes? I, he could, but I thought that was What's really his last name. Noir. I don't know him though. <laughs> but no, but I think it was really cool that somebody you know that we're not necessarily friends with. Um, from Pennsylvania, someone we've never heard before, just kind of gives say, "Hey, yeah. somehow I've stumbled upon and couch pies, and I'm binging, binging on it." it. And, yeah. and that's the that's to be honest with you, we are what almost eighty episodes in. Yeah, you know, you have to binge now. You have to binge, and, and it just subscribe and just yeah. go back from step one. All the way up. It's worth it. Yeah, Time will fly. Yeah, absolutely. No pun intended. Well, there was a pun intended. We are flying in an airplane. Sure. So, But yeah, you know, I think there's a lot of podcasts out there, most of them active, but none with consistency like us. Sure, sure, so, sure, sure. What's that? Sure. What's that? Sure. One more time. Sure. So yes, I think when people want to go back and, and take a look, they, they want to see consistency. And we've been bringing that for the past year and a half. And we're so excited that people like, uh, what's his name? Guy Noir? Grim Noir. Grim Noir. Thank you so much for listening. And, We're so uh, consistent that we did two episodes in a boat that was yeah. leaking water on our feet we with should not electricity. Have. We no, definitely we should did, have though. not been doing that. So thank you, Lori. Thank you, Grim Noir. So much for your fan be- fan feedback. Blah, 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 drunk. Um, you're definitely getting some fan f- uh, from frequent flyer points, right? Mm, definitely. And what is that going to garner them? Uh, anything from array from surprise prizes such as autograph. Oh, I love surprise prizes. Oh well. I- if if you you listen to Couch Pilots all the time, well, of course, um, you've racked up a lot of frequent flyer points, Daddy. If anybody is racking up frequent flyer points, it's got to be the email, right? Uh, surprise prizes such as aviator glasses signed by us, um, show notes. Like, yeah. I'll tell you what, if you would like, Dusty, since you're here, um, we will sign our notes for. The floppy dogs episode, and and you can it's catch floppy. it. Floppy, right? That's why I said floppy. I thought you said floppy. Uh, the, it the, like the, floppy. The, air, the air in here, okay, is is a little. But yeah, I would it, love to take them back with me, but unfortunately, when I cross the threshold back to the afterlife, they will just burst in the cinders. Oh, oh. and uh, so do you have? A I look? would like to bequeath them to another listener. Okay. Maybe this grim noir. Okay. Oh. All right. So, Grim Noir, if you would give us your, if you would DM us your social security number or just your address, Dungeon we, Master. And Dusty, will you can you can you sign these? Oh, for sure. Okay. All right. Well, that's great. So, you know, right there, cashing in his points, he can get it. All we need is the address. Perfect. That's all we need. That sounds great to me. Ladies and gentlemen. It only took us 24 minutes to get there. Jesus Christ. I usually uh, have some sort of smart-ass thing to say here about what the show's about, but I'm going to turn it over to Dusty Rhodes. Dusty, as an avid listener to Couch Pilots, what, how would you, in a sentence or two, describe what the hell we're doing here today? All right, baby. Well, we got here on Couch Pilots, you got some critical elements that need to be involved. One, this show has not been picked up for production. They did one episode and one episode only. Two, it has to be easily available on your World Wide Web. You know what I'm saying, Daddy? (laughs) And three, most importantly, it has to be free because these jokers ain't getting no money from no sponsors. You got to be able to find it. Oh, Dusty, that was a that was a little he little, nailed it a little kick to the throat right there. <laughs> that motherfucker nailed it. 
Uh, today we discuss the pilot episode of Fluffy Dogs for the year of our Lord, 19 plus 86. Uh, great year. Blake, great <clears throat> year, 1986. I was 11 years old, and th- that was back when life was... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It was There was innocence to my oh, life. An age of innocence. This is the age of, of innocence. innocence. Um, good I time. love Bruce Hollinsby. And the rain. <laughs> no, the rain, they can fuck off. But I love me from Bruce Hollinsby. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, 11 years old. I was having a good time back then. Hooting and hollering. I was age five. Uh, it was the it was the uh, bicentennial, I think. Yeah, 19 uh, plus 86 of bicentennial of this great country of ours. Dusty Rhodes. I was 41 and I'm feeling fine. That doesn't rhyme at all. Um, what were you doing at the age 41? Professional wrestling? Uh, yes, indeed. In 1986, I was wrestling all over the place for <laughs> the great NWA, which later became the WCW, which later became the WWE. What did the money start coming in? That's oh, I was I making bank back in the 70s, Daddy. Were you really? Oh, I was the American dream. They would have me come from city to city and wrestle the champ. And if I didn't have the belt, you'd best believe I was going to be winning it. Fantastic. Blake can't take this. Uh, now, I was only five, and Blake, you like were... a dream come true. This is like the dream American dream. dream come true. So I was five. You were 11. It's hard to think back to then. Yeah, Dusty Rhodes is 41. 1986, but, but let's all go back, shall okay, we? Let's take it back. Gl- uh, it might be the glory days for Dusty Rhodes. Here glory tonight. days. When you go down, glory days. Glory days. You know that Bruce Springsteen song. Love Bruce Cal- Hornsby. Captain, I thought you were going to join in, but you let me down. But it's usually no, I, a singer. This song is built on the back of his sing-along <laughs> songs, and I thought I was going to get to sing a duet I, with the great Captain. To be honest with you, I... I, I I don't want you're you're the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. I feel as though this is, is nothing more American than doing a duet of Bruce Springsteen, my good man. I, I'll, I'll get you on the next song. All right. I was just trying to be respectful. Uh, let's respect 1986 by going back to that time, shall we? The digital time machine, as I like to say. Let's put our minds in 1986 when Fluffy Dogs came out, so we can properly be in that. We can be in the mindset sure, of that show, sure. right? You can't. You can't watch a pilot. And think, oh, we're in 2017 because you're. It's but, just you're. You're just going to be a ray of surprise yeah. prizes. Blake, I'll be honest with you. You you definitely can do that. But oh, it's, but it's not, it's not fair. fair. No, no, that's not fair at all. You have to. You have to put your mind in that year. Here's my thing. Here's an example. Okay. You can't have Dusty Rhodes. That's me. Wrestle Brock Lesnar right now. Oh, are you, you kidding me? It's he's a different around time. a bag he, of bones. It's he's a different, the beast incarnate. It's a different time. He's sponsored by Jimmy Johns. He's got those vetoes and those gargantuan subs going through him. Right, but there's I can't. It's, it's a different that. It's a different style. Oh, it's, it's a totally different, different style. Yeah. The bodies are different. The bionic elbow does not stand a chance against fifteen drum suplex. Thank you very much. That's that's absolutely correct. You could sum it up better than that. I'm going to name some time, some things in popular culture that we can think back to to put our minds in okay. 86. I know we mentioned him last time. I'm going to mention him again. Mike Tyson becomes the youngest heavyweight champion in history. I love that boy. I love the way he talks. How would you say the How would you say the name Mike Tyson? Mike Tyson? Oh, yeah, yeah. he was he was <laughs> the best uh, heavyweight champion of the world. Oddly enough. Uh, the Dream just watched a documentary on Netflix. Oh, is that right? What's it called? Uh, it was Simply called Tyson? Champs. Oh, Champs. And it was about Tyson and Holyfield and, and the like, if you will. And, okay. And it was, it was a fantastic documentary. Do you, do you remember the time? I know you're only 11, Blake, but when Mike Tyson was the champion. Oh, yeah. He was the Do you sh- remember the pay per views that come oh, out? Yeah. People would get these pay per views. They would cost like $100 back then. And it would last, you know, you'd watch the, the three bouts beforehand. It, it would be, it'd be like three or four hours of just of fights. And then you see 90 seconds of oh, Iron yeah, Mike. Yeah. And, and Mike would That's just right. beat the shit out of whoever it was. Oh, he's, a, he's fucking pummel him. And at, at the end of it, everybody was like, yeah. yeah. Like, he, I would have been like, Fuck that. And he had a Nintendo game, which my other son, Dustin, loved playing. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Really? Oh, yeah. Fantastic Nintendo game. Love yeah. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Um, I played it recently, and I did not make it past Soda Popinski, <laughs> let alone Mike Tyson. That aside, um, 
yeah, you know, Mike Tyson, people were rarely disappointed. You would think, oh, I just put out $100 of my hard-earned money for 90 seconds. But no, they loved it. They oh, loved yeah. to see that black man beat the shit out of another black man. I think people would, like, with couch pilots, right. like, if it lasted, like, 15 minutes... They would be like, it was well worth yeah, it was, the download. It, it's like when you take orange juice and they say not from concentrate, but we would be from concentrate. Sure. It would take so much couch pilots and pack it into 15 minutes to be more than enough. The Oprah Winfrey Show debuts nationally during September of 1986. The show had become a uh, had been a success with the local Chicago audience, and rising host Oprah Winfrey soon signed a syndication deal. Her show soon became the highest-rated talk show in the U.S. and aired for 25 seasons, winning over 45 Daytime Emmy Awards. Using her show as a platform, Oprah Oprah became an influential figure in popular culture and is now ranked as one of the wealthiest and most powerful African-American women in the country. Oprah Winfrey's show made over 4,500 episodes before it ended in 2011. 4,500 episodes? Yeah. Dusty, were you ever on Oprah Winfrey's show? I was not, but... If you remember right, in when I was in WWF, yes, yes, sir, I had a manager named Sweet Sapphire. Oh, yes, I do. She was a fantastic lady. You guys and wore almost the identical unitards. I did not wear a unitard. I wore a tank top and trunks with a polka dot. My mistake. My okay. apologies. Originally, Oprah was my first pick to be my manager. Like, first pick and she denied it, or first pick she did it for a little while and eventually it was Sapphire? She, un- she unfortunately had to decline. She had prior obligations. Well, she's making 4,500 episodes of her show. She didn't have time to go travel yes. na- travel all the city to but city. But can you imagine that team of oh. the dream and Oprah? Wow. That would be good. Did that you ever get her in fun. one of those unitards? I, I don't want to think it's Deadman to listen. And- okay. <laughs> Is Oprah a gay lady or what? <clears throat> Her and Gail? Is she a gay lady? Come on, you know, Dusty. She wasn't back in 87. Oh, I know what that means. You're saying that you, Dusty Rhodes, fucked Oprah Winfrey. The American Dream did the American Dream. <laughs> did nice. the American thing? By having sex with a slave. Roy uh, Grass. Slave. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Good God. These are the racist elements that I try to avoid. <laughs> Well, he said the American dream. She oh, was, oh, oh a natural was, segue to racism. She was slavery. coming up and <laughs> obtaining her gold, and she was uh, she was the American dream. Oh, so I'm, I put I'm sorry. the dream in the dream. I completely dream. threw that off. I apologize. Richard, this is not that kind of show. Richard Branson. I was the original black magnet, if you can't oh, find oh. it. We might have hey, words after this. Dusty, high five that shit. No. A whoopish. <laughs> whoopish. <laughs> Is that alliteration? Uh, Richard Branson. I think it's more on him on a peel. <laughs> it is. Uh, Richard Branson on the 72-foot powerboat Virgin Challenger 2 breaks the world record for fastest crossing of the Atlantic. Hmm. That's a rich guy that has the spaceship, right? And then Virgin Mobile phones? Yeah. he, he Virgin everything. Virgin <laughs> Airlines, Virgin phones, uh, outer space man. Man. What do you think? How, how did that guy get his money? I don't. I don't know. I, I don't have no idea how he got his money. I would like to know. I think he's Sir Richard Branson. I think that means that the, what? the Queen put a sword on his head, like Paul McCartney, right? Elton John, uh, that guy that was in um, all the Lord Three's of the Rings Company, the Lord of the Rings movies. Oh, Ian McKellen, the guy that was in Star Trek, Frodo, Frodo, Bilbo Baggins, Bilbo. It's a funny name. Um, yeah, you know Richard Branson really just he kind of created his own brand. And said, I have, I, have, I have all the money in the world. I'm just going to go into outer space. I'm going to... Just do what he wants. Do whatever the hell he wants. I think he owns a couple islands. He's a crazy man. Wouldn't you love to have that kind of money where you could be crazy? I just want half of it. That's Ric Flair, baby. Woo! <laughs> Ric Flair has enough money to be crazy? Have you hung out with him? <clears throat> yeah. No, I've never hung out with Ric Flair. That guy is Looney Tunes. Oh, is he now? Did he have a heart attack on on camera? I don't know about that. Did, but did he have a heart attack during a show or something? I don't know about that, but I know his daughter had a bad boob job. Oh, jeez. One titty is lower than the other titty. <laughs> well, they all be wonky. Is that what you saying? Wonky dog. Woo! Why do we choose to watch fluffy dogs besides this guy telling us to do it? Three criteria. Yeah. Um, it had to be a uh, one show made, never went to series. Whether it ate or not is irrelevant. 
Two, we had to find it on the internet. And three, it had to be free. Now, what if uh, Dusty Rhodes said to us, hey, watch Fluffy Dogs, and it didn't meet that criteria? We, we couldn't watch it. I'm sorry, it. Dusty, with all due respect. Really? It, it, those, you wouldn't even make an exception those, for the dream. Those are the three pillars. There's only one exception ever going to be made. And Greg Garcia rule. And Oh, he is a listener. Listen to that. Very, okay, there's only going to be twice. Okay, you got Greg Garcia who sent us a DVD copy from his own personal collection. Right. And, this, and what was the other one? The second one is going to be, we're eventually going to do the Golden Girls I pilot episode. I know we are. God damn it. Where can you find the entire episode of Fluffy Dogs? Subscribe to Couch Pilots and iTunes or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes, or go to YouTube. And baby, you know what to do to sweeping nice. the nation, sweeping. He's doing great. Sweeping the afterlife. Sweeping the afterlife. Uh, flight attendants, uh, prepare for takeoff, please. That bell's always coming in hot. It's coming though. in hot. Sorry, the pilot. A band of dimension-hopping humanoid dogs need the help of two kids to return home. Great summary. That's a very concise summary, if I say so. I agree with you guys. This is a great summary. I spent 45 minutes watching this. I could have just read that summary, and I would have been Hey, But you would have missed all the flippant dogs. You would have missed all the adventure. Adventure, indeed. Indeed. Interesting facts. Let's all say it together. Adventure. Adventure. Indeed. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I it. Um, interesting facts. Ooh. The, the part of the show where we pull back the curtain, because every show has a curtain. Sure. That's that's what makes it a show. Is a curtain. Uh, we've got a curtain right here on the behind our chairs. That's right. We call the curtain uh, in, in wrestling talk okay, yeah. uh, gorilla. That's the gorilla position behind the curtain. Oh, the gorilla! I've never, I didn't Did know. Did I know that? It's That's named after Gorilla Monsoon. Oh, who really? Was famous old wrestler, and he would oh, sure. hang out. And that's when you watch the videos. He was in one of the first WrestleManias, right? No, he wasn't. He was never in a he WrestleMania. He was the announcer by then. Okay. Gino Morella. He had, he had tinted glasses. That he did, and he would always talk to Bobby the Brain Heenan, and he would say, "Oh, oh, will you stop?" <laughs> Is Bobby the Brain Heenan dead? No, he has cancer and is eating his teeth. <laughs> Good God, man. Jesus Christ. Hashtag face eating cancer. Hey, last time I saw Bobby the Brain Heenan, it looks like all those left is a fucking brain, but uh, apparently he's dying. Uh, I hope he gets better. It doesn't sound like it, though. You know what? He might die by the time this comes out. He's been dying for a long time, hasn't he? Maybe you can get him on one of your future episodes. Only if he obeys the three rules of couch pilots. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, interesting facts. I know for a fact he made an appearance at a video store in Bartonville, Illinois. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. Back in the day. So he can't be that hard up not to show up on your podcast. <laughs> Dusty Rhodes, do you remember... Uh, Mean Jeans Hot Dogs? No, he had yes. a burger place, baby. No, uh, no, he did have a burger place. It was up by ICC. Right. It, it was burgers, not hot dogs. No, right? but he... No, I'm just saying, I remember the I did not see Mean Jeans Hot Dogs. Did you remember, you do you remember that place, though? Oh, yeah. Did yeah. you go up there for the grand opening? Oh, no. He tried to get me to make appearances at some of those uh, locations. Did you ever um, do any appearances at Hulk Hogan's... Uh, Pasta Mania? Pasta Mania. <laughs> 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 no. Although the Dream does enjoy eating his, his bowl of pasta, he was not... Uh, yeah, he, have, he did not lend his likeness to a Pasamania opening. I have a, a interesting fact about that. Oh, let's hear it, Daddy. Um, Kulop Elisak worked, you. worked at one of those <laughs> in the Mall of America. I don't know how interesting that is. To me, it is. <laughs> in the, the great Minnesota, the Twin City. Yeah, the Mall of America. Just yeah. a few miles from here, Mean Gene Okerlund had a, a restaurant. I thought it was Mean Gene's Hot Dogs, wasn't it? No, it I, or was it called Mean Gene's Burgers? I don't know. Anyway, he was there for the grand opening, and I went to the grand did opening. Did you really? And I was about five feet away from that old fucker. Nice. I didn't get to meet him, but he was walking around talking. You know, that's a story. That's what he does. Anyway, interesting facts. Don't taint someone else's experience. Don't comment on these facts. Don't turn to one another and say, I like that fact. I don't like that fact. I believe it. I don't. The truth, the truth is, these facts are self-evident. It was, right? it was Mean Gene Burgers. It was Mean Gene Okay. But I know he sold hot dogs there. The All dreams right. lived the field. A one-hour animated television special, which aired on November 27th. That's Thanksgiving. 
1986 on ABC was intended... Gobble, gobble, baby. ...intended to be a pilot for the third Walt Disney television animated series. <coughs> Whoops. Bless um, you. This show is built in the back shit. of his back purse. He needs to call the doctor. November 27th, that was Thanksgiving, 1986... Uh, where were you, Dusty Rhodes, November 27th? It's 96th? funny you ask. I was at Starcade. Starcade? I thought it was a WCW event. Now the You know, the NWA WCW. Was it? Okay. Yeah. It was, I was in a first blood match with uh, Tully Blanchard. And it was the Night of the Skywalkers. It was, I don't think it had anything to do with Star Wars. <laughs> But that's what they called it because Jim Crockett Productions, he loves copying other people's things. And I said, long distance information, give me Memphis, Tennessee. Tully Blanchard, you better phone your match in, Jack. That's what I said to him. And you know what? He cut me open and I bled. Oh, oh. Have you seen my forehead? Oh, it's scarred up. It's pretty bad. bad. It's, it's pretty bad. It's I, factually accurate. Very much and so. And I got color. Before he did, and I wanted to bust his ass open with my bionic elbow, but he cut me open, and he won the match, and I was livid. Did you lose the television title that night? <sighs> I don't like to talk about Fair it. enough. I respect you not to mention it. Uh, animation was supplied by TMS Entertainment. It's a fact. Uh, while she may have been intended for the series, Fancy, an additional pink fluffy dog, was not featured in the pilot. It's a fantastic country song by Reba McIntyre. He is your one. He is Fancy your one. Up, you get one with wait, 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 let's, let's go. Let's start it. A one and a two and a three and a four. Here's your you one chance, fans, that don't let me down. Back of their songs. There we go. Uh, what, in, what happened before that? That was just a hot fucking <laughs> mess. Images, oh, dolls, coloring books, and puzzles supplied in the 1980s are from a children's book which included Fancy and were apparently based on preliminary designs for the Fluppies. The so, f- this is a book before it was a show. Okay. Oh, they had the merchandise and right. And uh, yeah. The, that's where the money is. They were baby. ready to cash in on that branding. The baby. Money, is money is in the merchandise. I don't know how many gimmicks I sold. At the tables, everybody wanted an American Dream T-shirt. Everybody wanted an American Dream bandana. Koozie. Everybody wanted an American Dream underwear. <laughs> I never knew they had those. Oh, they were on. They were under the table. You were there. Literally. Special for them. <laughs> uh, the Fluffy Dog special that aired on the U.S. television network ABC on November 27, 1986, preempting our, our world. It scored a Nielsen rating of... 5.3 out of 10, placing 70th oh, among network programming. It was the week's lowest rated program. The whole week? It's a fucking cartoon, man. No one's going to watch that fucking on shit on prime well, time. But it's on things. Cody was watching. Well, besides your delightful son, the apple but I of think, your eye. You know, with it being on Thanksgiving, kids, you know, they're, they're, the, the parents are going to want to put kids in front of the TV after dinner so they can have some, you know, adult beverages. You'd think that would have got a better rating. Hmm. You would think so. Disney changed its demographics so it appealed more to boys by redesigning the Fluppies and adding futuristic dimension-hopping idea, which did not exist in previous incarnations. That's oh. a, that's, that plays a pretty big role in the show, I'd say. Yeah, I'd I, I say so. A very big role. Uh, the Fluppy Dogs debuted earlier as plush dolls made by Kenner. Several other merchandise, including books and annuals, were also released. There were six dogs instead of five, and all of them had different names and personalities to the film. So they changed it wildly. They to the put film. they put all this merchandise out, and then only just had the one episode. I guess so. Hmm. They thought they had something. Interesting facts. Over. Good job, Dusty. You did a great job. Thanks. I, for I, was, I yeah. held it in. I was worried about you I breaking. Was, I was really, really concerned about dropping the I would. You you don't want to Conrad that shit. I do not. Mm-mm. Not for a little section. I like to call. Twitter responses. Twitter responses. Twitter responses. Somebody Twitter just back for once. I don't even know what Twitter is. Twitter is a social networking platform which you have only 140 characters. Who's calling you? Adam Z. Is he really? I'm it, in bed, motherfucker. Sir, call him back. Let's get him live on the show. Huh? Let's get him live on the He's show. He's still ringing. It's still ringing. Get, answer him. Answer it's him. Still ringing, ding, Let, ding, put, ding. put him on speakerphone. Oh, Let's see what Adam oh. says. Where he did went, he go? He went off. Hold on. All right. He doesn't even know the dream is here. Well, Dusty Rhodes, um, Twitter is a social networking platform, like I mentioned, which everyone is involved with, practically. 
And so is the case with some of the people who are responsible for making this show, including Jessica Pennington. And we're gonna we're gonna hear something from her. Hey, what are you doing? Nothing. What are you doing? We're recording live right now, and you're on Couch Pilots with with the Black Magistrate and me, Captain Philip Brestershire, and the one and only Dusty Rhodes. Oh, what's up, guys? How are you all doing? What's up, man? We doing good, baby. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Why are you calling me so late at night? <laughs> Because you just He's called me. You. He was just. I didn't call you. You, you were doing a common courtesy. <laughs> yes, and he's returning the phone call. Maybe I was uh, trying to get to the voicemail. Oh, you that room to joke because you're all jerks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So I called you back when you were trying to leave a voicemail to our. What's the What's the number? Do you know the number? It's nine one zero couch pilots or pilots one or whatever it's called. I don't know. I googled it. Why are you <laughs> We miss you, buddy. I miss you guys. We hey, we love the show. We love uh, christening Naomi Garcia. Oh, I know you do. <laughs> um, don't worry. Uh, special announcement. Dave couldn't make it this week, but uh, we got a Blunder Years coming out on Thursday. So oh, there you go. Hell oh. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Is this episode two to the, of the Wonder Years? I the bl- it's, it's the Blunder episode Years. episode three and four. So it's episode two of the Blunder Years. Episode three and four of the uh, the Wonder Years. Very good. Good times. Very good. That means Winnie Cooper's brother is already dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, she's still like twelve, but yeah, we're getting there. <clears throat> um, Adam, you have a chance to talk to because we resurrected the spirit of Dusty Rhodes, um, you know, from heavens. Is there anything? Yes. Is there anything that you would like to ask the the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, before we we let you go? You know what? I, I uh, there's just so much. There's so much. So much I want to say, and um, I'm just thank you for my childhood. You're welcome, it was amazing. baby. Because of you, it was better. Um, but I mean, there's so many questions, and really, I don't want to take up all of his ghost time. Because I know that's important. Hey, do you know we're four, we're forty seven minutes an episode and still have not even gotten through interesting facts. <laughs> we're not gonna do the pilot. We're not gonna break down um, the pilot. I tell you that shit right now. I would say that's an interesting fact, but that's um, <laughs> but I know that's shunned. So right. Well, yeah. hey, hey, I won't answer this time, so you can call the hotline. All right, I wanted to call call the hotline. Now I got to disguise my number so you know it's not me. All right, we love you. Love you guys. Love you, Adam. It's nice talking to you. <laughs> oh, impromptu. 47 minutes. There's no way we're going through the pilot. So I will say this real quick. Um, Twitter responses. Jessica, no, take, your, take your time. We don't give a Twitter responses. Take your time. Uh, Jessica Pennington. She is at Horrid She Was. Uh, she played Claire on the show. She played the neighbor girl, the human nice. girl. And I said, hey, uh, Jessica Pennington, we're a couch pilots. We're a podcast. So we talk about failed pilots. Hey, you share a little bit of your experience with you. And she says, I was 18, and I had to fly back to Los Angeles from Carnegie Mellon to report, record my part. It was such a big deal for me. It was my first voiceover job. What typically makes Disney so good is they record the vo- voiceover first and then animate to the performance. Nice. The role of Claire in Fluffy Dogs. I recorded to uh, finished and animated uh, temp pencil drawing scenes and had unfinished sections. It was a bit backwards and completely wonderful. Awesome. So that's what she had to say. And I said back to her, hey, looking over your IMDb, it looks like the start of a pretty cool career. Thanks for getting back with us and sharing a bit of your experience. And then uh, Jessica went on to like all of our tweets. So thank you so much, Jessica Pennington. And what's her Twitter handle? It's at horrid she was. H-O-R-R-I-D she was. Just like the Talking Heads song. Awesome. So thank uh, you that's very much. fantastic. <clears throat> thank you so much for getting back with us. We really appreciate it. And we, we are genuinely interested in this. I know this is very tongue in cheek, but we love to dig into these pilots. Sure. And when we have someone connected to it, it makes it all the more better. Um, very similar to this commercial for the FCF network. Hey folks, this is Kevin from Let's Try This, a podcast with me and my wife Steph, where you will find out that we are my anything wife. but the conventional couple. We tackle subjects like professional wrestling, reality TV, and we'll be trying new things like weirdo healthy foods from the section you pass in the grocery store. 
We think we're funny sometimes. Well, at least I do. So we hope you think we're funny too. You can find Let's Try This on the Fakakta Comedy Funhouse Network at fcfnetwork.com, as well as all of your favorite podcast apps. Let's try this. Because why not? Nice. Let's try this podcast, the newest podcast on the FCF Network. We were on an episode of that not too long ago. What yep. was your experience with that? It was deeper than I thought it was going to be. Oh, they started the- asking us personal questions, and I felt naked and afraid. And, but you know what? I felt comfortable being naked and afraid. And that really is that's that's the point, right? Like let's let's get let's get down let's, to brass tacks. Let's, let's let's really understand who we are. Let's let it all out and feel better as a result. And let's try this. And let's try this. It right was great here on the it FCF. Was, it was Network. great. Um, I'm I'm glad I shamed Kevin into having us on the show. It was wonderful. <laughs> I do think that was the deeply rooted. You think so? I I don't disagree with you. No, but uh, his lovely wife Steph, lovely dog Gus. And I tell you what, too, if you are in the Peoria area on a Thursday night, go to Poor Brothers in Peoria Heights, and he is hosting the trivia night there. We had so much fun. You and I went down there one night, surprised him, and we had a hell of a time. It was a lot of fun. I, mm-hmm. I met some broad down there that wanted to sleep with me. Oh, yeah. She was all Oh, that sounds like a good time, baby. Well, I didn't do that, but she was a nice lady that I knew from when I was a kid. She had a ponytail in, but halfway through the night, she had let it all out and was Oh, it. that's when you know it is on. I'm telling you, that's what I told him. I said, I said... She when they wa- stop playing with their hair and they're brushing it back. Well, and- she kept hugging me and she kept buying me drinks. I was like, "You're a married lady, and I'm not. I'm not. Well, I'm not a lady either. But uh, I can't read women at all. But Blake and Blake and Steph both were like, "That girl wants to sleep with you." I was like, "All right, well, I'm not going to do it." You know what? What? Good on you. Good on me for sure, and good on the FCF Network. Thanks here for not for trying me. that. <laughs> I didn't. I did not try that. Some strange is best left being strange. Thank you, very <laughs> dusty. Thank you. This is a guy who knows, too. This oh. guy is, has been on the road a thousand times. He's had every opportunity under the sun to get with some strange. Did he take it all the time? I don't I've, know the answer. I've, I've winded down with kings and queens, and I've slept in alleys and ate pork and beans. <laughs> A to Z. You've done it all. Blake, I'm going to turn to you real quick. We're so far into this fucking shit. Do we have time to go through this entire... We don't have time for this, do we? <clears throat> Um, I don't think we have time to go through it because it's a forty-five minute episode. But let's just let's just I, let's do it a different way. Okay. Let's go and just kind of talk openly about it, not necessarily in order. I'm not going to look at my notes. Um, this is what I remember. Have we taken off yet? Uh, did you do, here do I don't know do do the next one? I don't know what the next. You take one. it up and bring it down, That's and fine. he does things in between. Don't do that. You press it. It's not going to make sense at this point, is it? There we go. Diaz the Dave waving his happy ass goodbye. This is a cartoon that Disney made. They're trying to start a franchise about uh, five different color. Each each dog is different colors. They're anthropomorphic in the fact that they speak. Right. They walk on their hind legs, and they have a magical glowing key. Which looks like a glowing dildo. It does. It, it reminded me of Sweet Sapphire. Oh, did it now? It glowed. Did it seem like a phallus to you? I think that says more about you than it does. About- I've stuck stuff like that up my butt. It's fine. They uh, they take this glowing key. They stick it in the midair. They say they can <clears throat> smell doors. The, and- the green the green one the green dog that put the paint on his head backwards. He could smell the doors. And you know who that green dog was? No, tell me who that was. Sweet you Sapphire? guys talked about him earlier. That's the same guy that did Garfield. Rip. If the dream knows one thing, it's voice actors. The, the and that voiced was voiced Garfield from Lorenzo Garfield and Friends? Lorenzo Music. From Garfield and Friends. From Garfield. I, uh, okay. He was the voice of Ozzy, the green dog. I had no oh, idea. That's incredible. His favorite. Yeah, Ozzy. That was Cody's favorite. I, I I used to watch Garfield and Friends all the time. So there, there's these dogs, and um, and they make a fucking stargate. You ever see that movie with James <laughs> Spader? Like, I was like, thinking more of a Richard Dean Anderson. It's nah. a star. It's a star. Gate. Know, you got to go with the movie, and it had the okay. guy that wasn't a guy that was. Oh no, it was a girl that wasn't a guy in that movie with Gabriel Byrne. You know what I'm the talking crying about? Game? The, the crying game, daddy. <laughs> and he was in that movie Stargate with James Spader. <laughs> and that's what these flippy dogs were doing. They were open a fucking Stargate and just jumping all around. This is around. basically Disney's attempt at creating the crying game, but in a cartoon <laughs> form. 
So here's what the basically what's going on. These 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 dogs yeah. are going from porthole to porthole trying to get back home. Well, I mean, are they really trying to get back home? No. Because because it seems like they're just they're out there for adventure. They just no. want to have fun. Well, they want to have adventure, but they're trying they to get definitely want adventure. Yeah, they 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 definitely do. But they want to get back home. But why do they want to get why why do they leave to in start the, first the adventure place? over again? You know just, why? Because that guy Wagstaff is after them. JJ Wagstaff. He knows what the fluffy dogs. Oh, the fluffy he, dogs stumble upon Earth right. by, by some happenstance. They get thrown into um, the, uh, like the local kennel. The local, local kennel. Uh, yeah. This lady comes in and buys one of them. She mm-hmm. buys Stanley. He's the blue dog. Yes, yeah, Stanley is the blue dog. Um, that's how this all gets started. Yeah, and then the dog's like, "Hey, I, you know, I'm, I, I, I got out talk. of here. I escaped. Scratch and- my balls, and your your bed will float." <laughs> No, nope. <laughs> it's a little different than that. We'll we get into it later. Uh, but he's like, hey, you know what? I'm, I got adopted. They tried to make themselves really cute and presentable. They get adopted. He's like, I'm going to come back and rescue the rest of you. And we're going to find our way back home. But it gets a lot more complicated than that because oh. the boy gets them. He discovers they can talk. He starts scratching his head. The dog's got wild dandruff that makes them fly out <laughs> exactly. the window. Exactly. They got this magical dandruff and yeah. they just go floating off into the sky. And they do. But and then at the same time, you got this rich guy, JJ Wentworth, giving flag, cash money, cash Waggle now. Flag. Flagstaff. Oh, Waggle Flagstaff. Flag. And, and if you recognize his. Was it bo- Wagstaff or Flagstaff? It was Wagstaff. Because I wrote for because half. Because it's a pun with the dogs and the wag oh. and the tail. Um, he was the voice of the villain in Disney's Gummy Bears. I don't know if Bouncing you ever... here and there and everywhere? I'm you a got gummy it. bear. Yes, but he, I'm a gummy he was bear. the bad guy on the Gummy Bears. Which bad guy? The guy, the Duke. Oh, I don't remember that. Um, so yeah, this guy collects exotic animals. I don't which know how is he weird. Wear that. He got a fucking platypus that he was talking shit to right. and <laughs> said like... They thought you was mythical once too. Yeah, he did like, say right, it. Right, but the 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 fluffy dogs are a mythical creature, and yeah. that's why he wants they them were for in his a collection. Book. Who wrote this book? I don't know. Who I think we would have found love. out about that in future episodes. Uh, J.G. Wentworth, uh, Cash Money, Cash Now, eight one zero nine. He's he's in this office, and and the animals, all of his exotic collection, is right in his office. Oh, what do you, yeah. you think that office is smell like? A fucking shit. Right, and they 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 keep feeding the the python. They he's got, got that snake. It doesn't have a lid on it. Nah, no. Jake the snake robbers. He always very carried, good. Amazing. He always carried uh you know Damien with him in a bag. Now this snake was just. It, there wasn't even a top on that. Right now, case. Jake the Snake Roberts had, uh, uh, you know, is very well documented. That he had a, a, a history with uh, drugs and alcohol. I can't quote on that, if you will. Right, but my question to you is: when you were out there on the road and you were wrestling, you were in pain every night. I mean, you were hurting every night, but you had to go it takes out there a toll on. on your body. Did you partake in any kind of illegal substances? By legal, do you mean against the law? I mean, we all did our fair share of elephant tranquilizers and thomas and barbiturates. And barbiturates? <laughs> <laughs> we will not talk like that on this show. How dare you, sir? <laughs> this is a classy show. Oh, boy. So basically what you got here is uh, this kid who's got a fluffy dog and his neighbor is a, a young girl who's got and a he's, crush yeah, on her. Oh, he's got a crush on her. You know he was whacking off to... Oh, sure. Looking out that that big old window he got. The he was jerking his fluffy, I tell you that right much. Now, and she was like, oh, hey, I thought you was a nerd. And... Yeah, he's he, like, here, take this dog. Yeah, That's because he went. They went and got the 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 girl dog, whose name was Tippy, I believe. I don't know. Yep. Yeah, and so uh, he they couldn't he couldn't afford to get all of them out, so he gets Tippy out, and then he goes over to her house, knocks on the door, and he's like, hey, I I think you're cool. Here's a dog for you, and she's like, oh. And 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 the way they got that dog is he he scratched it on his head and then the ears became boners and then that made the <laughs> that made the magic dandruff come out and the bed yeah. flew away. It's true. It's just like uh, Peter Pan and the fairy dust, right? This is basically what you got in this show: is two human kids, a collection of five fluffy dogs, 
And the floppy dogs are trying to get home. And there's about 75 different kinds of porthole uh, doors that they Yeah, they keep trying to open different doors. It doesn't work. Weird stuff comes out of it. You got a rich guy trying to capture him. He captures him. He loses him. He captures him. They escape. You know, it's it's, it's kind of back and forth. Uh, But all it's it's basically just a story about a a boy and his dog. And it's like, it's 45 minutes. Yeah. And there's something going on all the time. This, there's no like oh, it's lulls. Action, it's action packed. Action packed for sure. Like it, an American Dream match against Tully Blanchard. Action packed. At Starcade 1986. Boom. We ain't stopping until someone bleeds. Did you know you know who that boy Jamie who who did his voice? Who's that now? <laughs> it was it was a uh, a boy that uh he was <laughs> <laughs> He was a child actor. Is that right? He may have been in a few movies that you think. Uh, such before. as Sixth Sense. No, that was Haley, Haley Joel Joe Osment. Osment. Um, this boy, he played Spock in what? the in the Star Trek movies as a young boy. He played Little Lemon Nemo. Wait, wait, wait. Little <laughs> Lemon Nemo? Okay. Say, redo that. Little Lemon Nemo. <laughs> Dale's Pale Al. <laughs> he also, if you're, if you're familiar with the Michael J. Fox vehicle, Team Wolf. Sure, absolutely. He played the dog whistle boy that was in Howard's hardware store blowing a whistle, making Sky Howard's ears go all crazy. That's pretty specific. Dusty Roads, I don't know if I remember that. Well, this kid, he ended up going through a bad time. He, he suffered some hard, hard times. times. Hard times? You know hard times, baby. And he ended up in prison. He uh, died of a oh, heroin overdose. He died. Overdose. Oh, Jesus. The guy who did the voice? The kid who did the voice of Jamie. I actually, I know that he died because I tried to tweet this motherfucker. He's dead at the age of 36, He's I believe. He's dead. From and heroin. Because Jamie suffered through hard times. How much money he was he making from doing voiceovers? When you he find have... out your dog is a magical creature from another world and can talk better than you, baby, that's hard times. And when the cute neighbor girl that you have a crush on is calling you a nerd, <laughs> that is a hard time. And when a rich animal collector is chasing you around town and the damn you hippopotamus <laughs> is r- destroying your house, baby, that's hard time. Hard time. Hard. Hard times hard time. indeed. Boy. Did we even talk about the hungry, hungry hippo that came? No, I was going to skip over that fucking yellow hippo. The thing is, uh, at the end of the day. Oh, no. Oh, no. At the end of the day, the uh, the fluffies escape back to their own dimension. But didn't didn't Wagstaff end up going into their. Him and I think his butler named Hamish. 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 That was Otis the Drunk from the Andy Griffith throw. Jesus, man. Jeez. You did your research there, uh, Dusty. If the dream knows two things, it's the wrestling, hard times, and if he knows the third thing, it's voice acting. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah they, they gave a, uh, they're in his home, Wagstaff's house, and he gives them one last scratch on the head and gets the ear bonus. And they lifted that damn house off the ground. Yep. Yeah, they sure did. And they said goodbye, and the flipper is going home. They made it home. They uh, and then uh, she like shoots to a couple months later. You got yeah, Claire and Jamie, the kids, and they're like, "Hey, I'm so sad. Right, there's a fluffy dog. Also, it was really it's, weird that there was snowing. sitting on sleds. It in was the snowing. Snow. All of a sudden, it was snowing. They were just deciding to talk about this fluffy dog like, epidemic that you, was <laughs> happened months ago. Yeah, are you sad? Yeah, me too. All of a sudden, boom, there they are. There's Fluffy no explanation. Dog. The Fluffy Dogs just appear out of it nowhere. It was fucking Fluffy Madness. And it was time for They opened adventures. the floodgates. It, always adventures. And all these Fluffy Dogs came running out of here and there and everywhere. It was insanity. It was almost as though there was turbulence. Please remain seated as we are now crossing a zone of turbulence. What a nightmare of events that just occurred, um, culminating in the complete description of the Fluffy Dogs television program. I think we did a good job summarizing the 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 thesis of the synopsis. <laughs> it's a pretty beefy summary, if I do say so myself. Um, but that doesn't mean there wasn't turbulence. It doesn't mean there wasn't something wrong with this program that said, sure. you know what? One and done. Yeah. Usually when you see Disney in front of something... It's oh, gold. it's uh, gold. Certified gold, my friend. 
Blake, why did this show work? This was a hot mess. It, it, it took off, and it was nonstop, and it wasn't... It didn't come together well. There was too much stuff going on. Um, they put it on in a horrible time, I guess. Thanksgiving, right? Thanksgiving, the, the eve of the turkey. Gobble, gobble, baby. The eve of the turkey. That makes me think of Survivor Series 1990 when the fucking gobbledygooka came out of that fucking egg. And <laughs> that was ridiculous. Do you remember that? Or am I the only one? <clears throat> what, I I, don't, what is this I'm signing you're here? You're just it's, signing it's, the, it's show the show notes. notes. For who? Because Dusty didn't want them. They're for so, Noir. Noir. Grim Noir. Grim okay. Noir. All right, perfect. Jesus. Or nor you, as he said. <laughs> I know this is for. We've been doing this for an hour. Um, more turbulence. This episode is brought to you by Uber. It says on that tablet, <laughs> call Mrs. Stewart call for it, a ride. Call and install. Um, turbulence. Jason, what, what about you? Ah, <sighs> boy. I don't know. This... I don't know. I, I feel like this is silly enough and goofy enough to where kids would just accept. They already this. had the merchandise. They already had the merchandise part of it figured out. F- they say uh, th- something they said online was Fluffy Dogs were originally targeted to young girls, but by the time it reached post production, the focus had changed dramatically. To boys, but it was not enough uh, to form a concrete target audience, which might explain its failure to become a regular series. So. They have this idea of fluffy dogs, okay? They have this, they have this, they galvanize this idea and they move forward with it and, and with it merchandise and stuff. And, but breaking they, apart. But yeah, but then they said, oh, let's make it into a series, but then they changed it. So maybe it was a, a matter of they, just, they didn't know what <clears throat> fluffy dogs are supposed to be and they sent mixed signals to the public. And they, 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 know they had the, the horse before the cart. Oh, very good. Yes. Never put the horse before the cart. Um, Dusty Roads. Yes. Yeah. Turbulence. Well, dogs. I know you guys have done another Disney pilot before. Oh, yeah, what was that called? By the name of Fuzz Bucket. That's all right. We sure did. And I think if you are analyzing the two of them side by side, mm-hmm. the Flippy Dog shows a lot more potential. Yes, I would say so. To Far- become a series. I agree with that. Compared to the Fuzz Bucket. Fuzz Bucket could very well will. be a one and done kind of thing, yeah. right? Yes. When the dream watched that with his son Cody, he did not even know that that was a pilot. He thought it was a one and done, one night stand. Mm. Now, what what do you think Cody would say? Cody, if he was on the mic right now. Cody, well, now he would he, say things a lot differently sure, because sure, he's sure, the sure, American sure. nightmare and he's in his thirties. But back in the day, he really liked the fluffy dogs. And he thought, I wish I had a dog that could talk to me like that. That is the dream, right? To be able to talk to an animal. That's a second American dream. To have a dog that you could have a conversation with. Yes. First American dream, have a great dog, support, or a great house, great job, support. The second American dream, have an animal that can talk to you. <laughs> I'm like a, a, a high and make a honey hoe. Make a Johnny a hoe, daddy. You, you ready to bring this bitch down? Uh, yeah, let's do that. Ladies and gentlemen, as we start our descent, please make sure your seat backs and tray tables are in their full upright position. IMDb, tried and true. There is a score out there. What will the score be, Blake? 6.5. 6.5, okay. Dusty Rhodes, if you had to guess, what would the IMDb score be for Fluffy Dogs? I'm going to guess about a 5.2. This is an 8.0. Wow. Good lord, that's a good rating. Mercy. And this is not from 10. This is not from 20 or even 30 people who just remembered a, a, a time in their life when anything was possible and that Disney cartoons were the greatest thing on the planet. This is from 227 ratings. Gee whiz. And still standing tall at an 8.0. Hashtag Fluffy Dogs. Critic that's reviews. what I'm using. Critic Reviews, a a reviewer from TotalMediaBridge.com says, You know what? I wanted to like this cartoon. And to be honest, there's a lot of really nice stuff here. The animation has some quality moments, especially animating the dogs themselves. And the story could create some interesting future episodes. But I get the sense that the entire production was rushed. No fine-tuning of the story or overall animation makes anything clicks. And with that ending, I don't even know how to make a series based off of that. Unless it's some... Humans versus Fluffy's type war disaster. I don't know about that. Well, here's my thing: is is in the po- uh, fluff apocalypse? 
the, fluff- the Fluffalix. Uh, it took all the wrong lessons from Gummy Bears, which you mentioned, Dusty, uh, which itself wasn't that great in the first place, but still managed to make epic adven- adventures without characters crying out adventure, even at five years old. That's pretty lame. Um, another thing is, they like blew their load on these porthole doors. There was like seven of them in the first episode. Maybe just do two or three. The key stopped working. Right. We didn't. Yeah. We, we didn't know why. We never found out why. There's a lot of stuff that's not explained. And I'm I'm a guy who says I don't need everything explained. I but, do. but you do. You want no lucids. Excuse me. We we need to understand though that. These doors provide opportunities for future episodes. Right, but right, but why would you have like fourteen of them in the first episode? I guess I yeah I, you're right. Viewer reviews. These are just the titles of some IMDb viewer reviews because there's like there's like sixteen of them. This has to be one of my favorites of all time movies. Mm. Best Disney movie ever. No, my favorite childhood movie. I have finally found this movie. It's Adventure, Jamie. Awesome. Great. It's adventure, baby. Great movie. My favorite. <clears throat> Where can I buy this? This pilot deserved better. Proposed pilot to ATV series that was never expanded. My favorite childhood film. Vague but definite impression. Great movie. Great. Wow. That's all of them. I didn't pick. I didn't handpick some of these good ones. That's all of them. Wow. All of these say, yes, I love this film. 8.0 on IMDb. That's, that's a pretty damn good. That's score. one of the highest ones we've ever done, without a doubt, without a doubt. But we have our own ratings. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to FCI Airport. Local time is eleven eleven, and the temperature is sixty nine degrees. For your safety and comfort, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened until the captains turn off the fastened seatbelt sign. Rating time. We took in a lot of information here. Yeah. A ton of information. And there was even more. And we we, co- we summoned the dead. Could we go back maybe even like in 50 episodes or something and do this one again? No, we're not doing this one again. Okay. No chance of that. One to seven. That's the scale we set forth. <clears throat> you can score to one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven. Seven's the best. One's yeah. the worst. It's based on the popular television series from the 1990s called Wings. And the, and the numbers are all based on characters. Number one being Roy Biggins. And number seven being the best. It's Brian Hackett. Captain Philip, rest assured, as I have so often done in the past, I turn to you. How do you rate Fluffy Dogs? I'll tell you what. Um, me and my wife watched it. My wife. Yo, wife. Together. Um, she fell asleep yeah. in the chair. Yeah. She disrespected the Fluffy Dogs. <clears throat> I'll tell you what. The Fluffies are cute. They are cute. Mm-hmm. You should have watched it with your young squire, Eli. Yeah. Um, he would have asked 45 questions. I can't take notes. And That's and, one per minute. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Uh, it had some potential. I, I can see the marketing. You know, cha-ching, cha-ching, oh, absolutely. dollar signs. Absolutely. Um, I do feel like it was, it was very rushed. And now that you mentioned, you know, it was very rushed. Like, there was a whole bunch of stuff going on. Um, I like the, the, the waggle staff, um, villain, kind of like a Corella DeVille in a way. Um, four, four, right down the middle. Even Stevens, number four, Joe Hackett. I get it. I totally get that. Dusty Rhodes, we brought you back from the dead for, you know, an hour and a half of content. I've been enjoying my time. Well, I appreciate you being here. Has it been hard times? No, it's been the opposite of hard times. It's been good times. When you get summoned from the dead mm-hmm. by the couch pilot, the, right. the the bottle cap here, the black magnet, you know, Captain Philip Bristol Show, that's good times, baby. And when you get to watch a fantastic pilot like the fluffy dogs that you call in and advertise that they do a show on, that's good times. <laughs> Uh, with all that in consideration. What, what's your fucking score? <laughs> yeah, Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> I'm going to give it a four. I'm okay. going to do the hack. I'm going to double hack it. Double hack it. Ooh. I think. The hack attack. I 
think that, yes, the pilot was rushed a bit at the beginning. It was kind of confusing. What's going on? <laughs> Where are these flipper dogs coming from? What is this story? It did, it did, it did just kind of go into the story. Yeah, there was you no... need to build that shit up for a few months. You need yeah. to let people know where you're coming from. What's your angle? All right. Okay. I get it. If you will. And I think... It could have been a good Saturday morning cartoon for the kiddos. But uh Would you just, say that maybe cutting it down to a half hour would have helped? For so, for so. They can take out the sexual tension between <laughs> Jamie and the Clea and he doesn't need to be diddling himself. Don't be silly, don't play with your willy. And <laughs> is it's just good times. It's a, good times. A, a fun show with the flippy dog. I agree, it is good times. And for that reason I'm gonna give it a five. Nice. Um this show, I don't know that I necessarily cared for, but I see the merit in it. Right. You know, kids would like this. I, I never understand when they take a kid's show and they put it on in prime time. That's not where it goes. No. You put it on Saturday morning. This is an era where Saturday morning cartoons rule. Why not put a special on in the morning, let it marinate for a couple months, and then come back exactly right with 22-minute episodes. This is not going to last. Is it? You can't You can't produce an hour cartoon once a week for right. 20 episodes. It's impossible. Right. You do half-hour episodes of this show, but it is fun, and it is cute, and the marketing would be insane. You can get all these little plush toys, these little plastic figures. People you would know buy everybody that want to flip it. You could have you made sheets, little twin sheets. Yeah, absolutely. Um, F-L-U-double-P-Y. That's exactly what I was going to say. But yes, this this is something that would definitely appeal to kids. I can see they're doing 20 episodes a season. There's a lot of fun here. There's magic. There's human beings interacting with, uh, you know, anthropomorphic dogs that are talking. What's not to like, right? right? There's a there's a kid that's not even in, is in grade school. Mm-hmm. He's going to hope to f- fiddle the piddle of a of a junior high girl. He's going to he's going to finger blast that girl like like you with a fish o fillet. <laughs> Um, the story doesn't necessarily make sense, but it doesn't have to because you're you're talking about kids that are probably between the ages of five right. and Does ten. Does the Care Bears make sense? No. no, absolutely not. They blast laser beams <clears throat> out of their chest. You know, it's I mean? called the Care Bear Stare. The Care Bear Stare. That was my second <laughs> finishing move, but they stole that from me. So I copyright. You, you didn't I, say. You didn't say I trademark. I did not say trademark, and they took. You gotta do I that. was gonna belly bump my opponents <laughs> and draw a star on my belly and be like the American Dream stare, and they did not go for it. That's fair. So you got a four, you got a four, and you got a five. That's an okay that's, score, I guess. That's good enough. And with that, we close the book on <clears throat> floppy dogs, never to be mentioned again. Ever. But we're not done. So many more pilots are out there, and we have a lot of time, as it's been documented that we do this every week. Uh, join us next time when we watch the pilot episode of 111 Gramercy Park. Here's a little something to wet your whistle. Wealthy New Yorkers who live in upscale apartment building and the various maids, nannies, and maintenance people who work for them. Huh. You can find the entire episode by subscribing to Couch Pilots and iTunes or your favorite podcast app of choice and... Then simply click on one of our classically blue links. They're right there in our show notes. Or go to YouTube. Dusty? You know what they do, do. Yeah, goddamn right. You goddamn right. Blake, how do you contact this stupid show? Oh, I, I'm i here. Uh, no. The email address is couchpilotspodcast at gmail.com. We have a, a Facebook page, Couch Pilots. Uh, Twitter, Couch Pilots Pod. And um, an Instagram... It's like, can I try this, Dusty? It's a gram. It's a gram. There you go. Got baby. yourself some it's, Instagram. It's a couch underscore pilots underscore podcast. <laughs> See, that sounds beautiful. Baby. Thank you, baby. <laughs> and then we have the dialing number, which is our favorite, which Adam Z called in live accidentally. And did he leave a uh, voicemail? There's two of them. <laughs> we'll <laughs> find out next week. <laughs> Nine ten pilots one is the number you want to you. call. It's also. Uh, 910-745-6871. You call us anytime you want. We're recording now. It's about 11 p.m. This is a great time to call. Maybe even later if you want. Maybe about sure. 3 a.m. if oh, you want. Oh, 3 a.m. is perfect. That's I the- must be lonely. <laughs> <laughs> you missed your chance, Captain. Is that, is that Rob Thomas? That was the math box 20. <laughs> um, and also, uh, home hub for couchpilotspodcast.com. Right. You can send an email from there. All the links, all the RSS feeds, subscribe, everything. 
Um, we're available on all podcast outlets. Yep. FCFnetwork.com. Definitely. You like that? That's the big pop of pump. You did it. Oh, we no, got, we did it. Got a Thano reference. Thank you very much. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, big a, pop of pumps. Your hookup holler if you hear me. That's damn right. Um, big uh, big pop of pump. That is a very sexual. He's a weird looking guy. It was steroids. He didn't used to be. He wasn't that big when he was he tag team. He had a mullet, and he was with the dog faced Grimley and Rick. Steiner, Steiner. His the brothers, brother. they had their Michigan, right? The they, Michigan jacket. And then yeah. he then he started sticking a needle in his butt and became. Jesus Christ, he got huge, didn't he? Jeez. Good it, God. I don't think going to explode. Oh, my God. Did he kill his wife and kids, too? Or <laughs> just. <laughs> nah, I think that was just Chris. Chris Benoit. R.I.P. Chris. Crispin Wah. Crispin Wah. Is that the guy who starred in uh, Back, Back to the, to the Future? Back to the Future. He was Crispin Wah. George McFly. <laughs> uh, Blake, thank you so much for being on the show. Hey, as always, you did a great job you, tonight. You did a great job. Thank you very much, as always. Uh, Dusty Rhodes, we're going to yeah. have to send you back to the great beyond. I'm sorry. Oh, well, I, I would like to thank you guys for letting me join you for this long. And if you don't mind... Could I, could I make a plug? <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, Dusty Rhodes, if there's anything you want to plug, that would be the time. <laughs> what would you like to plug? Dusty? Plug away, Dusty. I would like to plug my son, Cody. He's the American Nightman. You can see him wrestling in New Japan Pro Wrestling. That's NJPW. You can also find my other son, Dustin. He's wrestling for the WWE. He's gold dust. He's a bit silly. You know, people thought he was gay for a while, but then they just got used to it. And <laughs> it was okay. It was kind of fun. I, I love mean, it. I, I used to wear polka dots. And also, you can check out Drunken Lullabies every Sunday on the FCF Network. That's my f- one of my favorite podcasts. You love that to. one, huh? I love that show because I can't drink the beer anymore. You love that they have people describe it to you over I, the podcast? I, love, I can taste. I can taste it. Phantom like, booze. Like a a championship title on a <laughs> on a, a hot roof. summer night. Oh yes. It's suspended above the ring, just waiting for me to grab it while I climb that ladder. Have you and ever also put- can I mention like how impressive it is that I stayed in character it's the entire Jesus. episode? <laughs> so so <laughs> yes. Uh I listen to drunken lullabies on Sundays on the FTS network and I would love to thank you for uh Getting me back from the afterworld. And Our pleasure. Is there anybody you would like me to say hello to? Oh, geez. Anyone? My grandma Opal. Um, in, a, in a few months, we Is say hi to... also the blowjob queen? Because I would no, love... No, that's my mom. She's not dead okay. yet. In a few months, we say hi to Virginia Clayton for me. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Blake, anything else you'd like to say to her? <laughs> I think you broke him. <laughs> That's months and months of frustration coming out in the form of laughter. If I can help. No, always always helpful. No, I don't really have anything to say. I mean... Nothing at all? Nothing to say that hasn't been all said already. If this is the first time you're listening to Couch Pilots, check out a couple other episodes. This is an accurate representation <laughs> of the program. <laughs> There's a format. There's a format, but how often do you get such a... Uh, a pillar of the of an athlete two three times maybe in your life right and to you be up- fair you guys had gone on for about 20 minutes before i was brought in <laughs> <laughs> it's fuck us right and with and with fucking us this pilot may have been rough but it's always a smooth flight here on couch pilots thanks everyone and we'll see you next time three thefa i'm a coming home <laughs> here i come i'm a coming <laughs> On behalf of Couch Pilots and the entire crew, we'd like to thank you for joining us on this trip, and we are looking forward to seeing you on board again in the near future. Have a nice day! This has been a Fakakta Comedy Funhouse production, produced by Jason Tosher, executive produced by Blake Clayton. For more information and content, go to fcfnetwork.com.